What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to solve a system of linear inequalities by graphing. All right? So there's basically two different types of problems you're probably going to run into when doing these types of inequality problems. So I'm going to do one example of each one starting with this one right here. All right? So this is the system we're going to graph right here. So y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1 and y is less than x plus 1. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is graph these two lines by simply turning them into uh, just a regular linear equation. Okay, so in order to do that, all you have to do is replace these inequality symbols with equal signs, right? So this first one right here, I'll just write it right here, would be y is equal to 2x minus 1. And then this one right here would be y is equal to x plus 1. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways you can graph these linear equations. The one I'm going to use is the slope-intercept form or formula. So if you don't remember, that's this equation right here. Y is equal to mx plus b. Okay, so this number at the end right here, the, the b is your y-intercept, and this number right here, this m, is your slope. So if we come to this equation right here, uh, this negative 1 right here would be our y-intercept. Okay, so I'm just going to plot a point along the y-axis at negative 1 right there, okay? And then here the slope is equal to 2, right? So the slope is equal to 2. Now if I want to write that as uh, a fraction, I could write that as 2 over 1, right? So the slope is actually 2 over 1. So the rise is 2 and the run is 1, okay? So starting from this point right here, we're going to go up 2, right? 1, 2, and then over 1. So right there. Okay, so I have my two points, right? I can draw a straight line and graph that. But the important thing with graphing inequalities is figuring out what kind of line you need, okay? Because there's basically two lines, two different lines we can graph here, okay? We can either graph just a regular solid straight line like that, okay, just a normal line, or we're gonna graph a dashed line like that. Okay, so how do you know if you need a solid line or a dashed line? Well, that's just going to come from your inequality symbol, okay? So if you have a greater than or less than symbol, you use a dashed line like that, okay? But if you have a greater than or equal to, or a less than or equal to, then you use a solid line, okay? So basically, if there's the equal to symbol attached to your inequality, you use the just regular solid line, okay? So the equation that we're graphing right now is this one right here, right? Y is equal to 2x minus 1. But the actual inequality is this one, right? Y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. So as you can see, the inequality symbol right here is a greater than or equal to symbol, right? You see the equal to symbol attached. So that means we're going to use a solid line, right, when we graph this right here. Okay, so again, I have my two points right here, so I'm going to draw a straight line between them, and more importantly, I'm going to draw a solid line, right? So I'm going to draw a line just like that. That is beautiful. Okay, cool. Now, the only other thing we need to figure out is if we're going to shade in this side of the line, okay, or if we're going to shade in this side of the line over here, okay? So how do you figure out what side you have to shade in? Well, in order to do that, all you have to do is test a point on your graph right here, okay? And the easiest point to test is normally going to be this point right here at the origin, okay? 0, 0, right? So let's write that in. 0, 0, right? So all I'm going to do is plug this point in to this inequality. So let me bring down the inequality now. So the inequality is y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1, right? So I have a zero for my x coordinate and a zero for my y coordinate, right? So I'm going to plug in a zero for my x right here and I'm going to, and I'm going to plug in a zero for my y right here, okay? So then here we really have zero is greater than or equal to two, uh, two times x and x is also zero, right? And then minus one at the end. Okay, so then here we have zero is greater than or equal to two times zero, that's just zero, right? And then 0 minus 1 is equal to negative 1, okay? Negative 1. Okay, so I simplified my inequality, right? We have 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. So is this a true statement? Is 0 
bigger than, greater than, or equal to negative 1? Well, yes it is, right? So that means this point that we plugged in gives us a true statement. It gives us a true answer, a true solution. So since we know this point right here is a solution for this inequality right here, that means we're going to shade whichever side 0 comma 0 is on. So since we know this point right here is a solution, that means all of our solutions must also be on this side of the line, okay? So we just want to shade in this side of the line, something like that-ish, all right? That's, yeah, that's good. All right, cool. So we took care of our first inequality right here, right? Now all we have to do is graph this second one right here. So y is less than x plus 1, okay? So again, the first step is just replacing your inequality symbol, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Just replace it with an equal sign, okay? So here we have y is equal to x plus 1. Okay, now to graph this, we can use the slope-intercept formula, right? y is equal to mx plus b. So this b, or the number at the end, is your y-intercept. So right here, the y-intercept would be at positive 1, right? So I'm just going to plot a point along the y-axis at positive 1 right there, okay? And then whatever number is here next to the x is our slope, right? So here, since we don't have a number, we know that the coefficient is actually 1, right? So the slope is equal to 1. And if I want to write that as a fraction, I could write it as 1 over 1. Okay, so here we have the rise over the run, right? So the rise is 1 and the run is 1. So starting from this point right here, we're going to go up 1 and then over 1. Okay, so then we can plot a point right there. All right, so we got our two points. Now we can draw a straight line, okay? But again, the tricky part that you got to look out for is if you use a solid line or a dashed line. Okay, and that again simply comes from your inequality symbol, right? So you can see we have just a less than symbol, right? There's no equal to symbol attached to it. So that means you use a dashed line, okay? So I'm going to draw a straight line right here, but again, it's going to be dashed. Okay, now the last thing we have to figure out with our purple dashed line right here is which side we're going to shade in. Okay, so are we going to shade in this side of the purple line, or are we going to shade in this side of the purple line? Well, again, to do that, all you have to do is test a point, and the point I normally would recommend is this one right here, the origin, okay? So this time, we're going to plug in 0, comma 0 into this equation right here. So y is less than x plus 1. Okay, so again, I have a zero for my x coordinate and a zero for my y coordinate, right? So I'm going to plug in a zero for x and a zero for y. So here we're going to have zero is less than zero plus one. Okay, and then this reduces down to zero is less than zero plus one, which is just positive one, right? Positive one. Okay, so is this a true statement? Is zero less than positive one? Yes, it is, right? So since this point right here, 0 comma 0, gave us a true statement, right, a true solution, a true answer, that means we just want to shade in whichever side has 0 comma 0, which right here would be on the right side of this uh, purple line, right? Right, so we're just going to shade in all of this side right here, just like that. Okay, now, if you want to figure out where all of the solutions to these two inequalities are, well, that would just be where the two shaded regions intersect, okay? So by looking at this graph right here, that would be right inside of this yellow line, right? It'd be basically all of this, because this whole region right here has red and blue, okay? So if you plugged in any of the points that are inside of this yellow region right here, if you plug them into both of these inequalities, you would get true statements for each one, okay? Because as you can see, inside of this yellow region lies our point that we kept testing right here at the origin, right? Zero comma zero. Okay, so since we plugged in zero comma zero, right? Right there into both of our inequalities, we got true statements, true answers, okay? So that would be the case if with any of the points inside of this yellow region. So I hope it wasn't too bad. So let's just do one more example that I think you're gonna run into. Okay, so here is the last problem. So this is our system now. So 4x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 12, and y is less than negative 4 thirds x plus 1, okay? 
So again, the first thing you wanna do is graph your boundary lines, all right? And the way you do that is by simply replacing these inequality symbols with equal signs, okay? So this first one, I could write it, or let's write it down here. 4x plus 3y is equal to 12. Okay, so as you can see, this equation right here is not in slope-intercept form, but we can convert it to that by simply solving for y, okay? So if we're gonna do that, uh, if we're gonna solve for y, the first thing I'm gonna do here is get rid of the 4x, so I'm gonna subtract 4x. And what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So then on this side, these 4x's cancel out, and we're left with positive 3y is equal to 12 minus 4x, right? Or I could flip those and write it as negative 4x plus 12. Okay, negative 4x plus 12, all right? Now, the last thing I need to do is get rid of this three, so I'm going to divide by three. And again, what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So we have to divide this whole side by three also. All right, so then these threes cancel out, and we're just left with y is equal to uh, negative four divided by three. Uh, that's as simplified as that can get, so we'll just write it as that. Negative four thirds, and then we have the x out there, right? And then here we have positive 12 divided by three, which is equal to positive four, right? So plus four, right? So now it is in slope intercept form, right? So our y intercept is at positive four. So let's plot a point at positive four on the y axis. And then our slope right here is negative four thirds, right? The slope is equal to negative four thirds, okay? Now, whenever there's a negative sign in your slope right here, it's easier to just move the negative sign to the top or the bottom. So here, I'm just gonna move it to the top. Doesn't matter, could be either one. I'll just move it to the top. Okay, so here our slope is negative four over three, right? So the rise is negative four and the run is positive three. Okay, so starting from our point right here, we're gonna go down four, right? One, two, three, four, and then over three. One, two, three. So I got my two points, now I can draw a straight line, okay? But again, the tricky part is just figuring out if it's a solid line or a dashed line. And again, that comes from your inequality symbol, okay? So this first, this top one is the one we're working on right now, right? And as you can see, it has a greater than or equal to symbol, okay? So since you see the equal to symbol attached to it, that means we draw a solid line, all right? So I'm gonna draw a solid line between my two points here. Okay, now the last thing we have to figure out is if we're gonna shade in this side of the graph or if we're gonna shade in this side of the graph, right? So the way you figure that out is by just testing a point. And the point I always like to test is right here at the origin, okay, zero comma zero. Okay, so we're gonna plug in this point, zero comma zero, into this inequality right here. So let's just write it down here really quick. So four X plus, 3y is greater than or equal to 12, right? And again, the point we're gonna plug in is zero comma zero. Okay, so we have a zero for our x, a zero for our y, so let's plug in a zero for our x and a zero for our y. Okay, so here we're gonna have four times x, which again is zero, plus three times y, and y is also zero, and that is greater than or equal to 12. Okay, so four times zero, that's just equal to zero, plus three times zero, which is also zero, and greater than or equal to 12. Okay, so zero plus zero, that's just equal to zero, and then that's greater than or equal to 12. Okay, so we simplified this as much as possible. Now, is this a true statement? Is zero bigger than, is it greater than or equal to 12? No, it is not, right? So that means zero comma zero is not a solution. Okay, so that means whatever side this point is on are not solutions. Okay, so the origin is right here. So that means all of these on this side are not solutions. And I want to shade in actual solutions. So that means I want to shade in this side. Okay, this side is where my solutions are. Okay, cool. So we're done working on our first inequality. We graphed the line and shaded aside, right? So now let's do that with this second inequality. So again, the first thing you can do to graph this is just replace the inequality with an equal sign. So here we're gonna have y is equal to negative four thirds x plus one, okay? And this one is already in slope intercept form, right? So our y intercept is at positive one. So let's plot a point at positive one on the y axis. 
and then our slope is negative 4 thirds. And if you notice something, our slope right here is the exact same slope we had right here, right? Negative 4 thirds. Okay, and since they have the same slope, that means when we graph this other line, they should be parallel lines, right? Because they have the exact same slope, okay? So uh, let's apply the slope at our point right here at positive one. So again, we're gonna go down four and then over three, right? So again, starting from our point, we're gonna go down one, two, three, four, and then over one, two, three, okay? So there's my point right there. Now, am I going to draw a solid line or a dashed line? So again, that comes from your inequality symbol, right? So here, as you can see, we have a less than symbol, right? Just a less than symbol. So that means this is going to be a dashed line, right? So let's draw a dashed line between these two points. Okay, so I graphed my line. The last thing I have to figure out is if I'm shading in this side of the, the purple line or if I'm gonna shade in this side of the purple line, okay? So again, all I'm gonna do is test a single point. And the point I like to use is the origin right here, okay? Zero comma zero. So let's plug in zero comma zero into this equation or this inequality now. So y is less than negative four thirds x plus one. Okay, so again, I'm gonna plug in a zero for my x and a zero for my y, right? So here we're gonna have zero is less than negative four thirds times x, which is zero, plus one. Okay, so then here we're gonna have zero is less than uh, negative four thirds times zero, that's just zero, right? So that just goes away. And so we're just left with this positive one right here, right? Positive one, okay? So we end up with zero is less than one. Is this a true statement? Is zero smaller than one? Yes, it is, right? So since zero comma zero in this case gave us a true statement, right? Gave us a true answer, we want to include it in our shaded region. Okay, so since zero comma zero is on the left side, of this purple line. That means I'm gonna shade in the left side, right? Now, if I wanna figure out where all of my solutions to both of these inequalities are, well, I don't have any, right? Because there's nowhere on the graph where this blue region has in common or intersects with this red region. So since there's no regions that they have in common, that means they have no solutions. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.